Good morning. Crazy. Hey guys, it's DC here and today we're going over another Last Week You Asked Me or Lully M. If you haven't played this game before, basically what we do is we go to cybersecguidance.com forward slash forum and click on Q&A and then L-W-Y-A-M. Now, let's get to the new questions. Uh, there's this massive one from David here, which is a huge wall of text, which I'll get to later in this video. Let's start off with Austin Moroni. He has asked, what kind of tools slash programs do you recommend to someone who's starting out or some resources to look for those? I'm not too sure what you mean, some resources to look for those tools, but I can go through a couple of the tools that I use. I find the best way for me to learn is by doing. And to do that, I go to tryhackme.com or hack the box. Uh, there's a whole bunch of challenges on there that you can do which will help you sort of learn in a fun way what sort of cybersecurity is like on a more offensive level anyway. Um, there's not too many resources out there to learn uh, defensive security like firewall management or rules, but a good way to learn how to manage a firewall is to build your own. A really fun project that you can do uh, at home is to build a Raspberry Pi into a little firewall. Um, the firewall software or distribution, I guess, uh, that I would use is PFSense. And it's it's really easy to set up um, and it gives you all of the sort of management tools that you would have in like a large environment, large enterprise environment. So yeah, that's sort of where I would get started with cybersecurity defensively anyways, to build a PFSense Raspberry Pi firewall. But yeah, going back to CTFs or challenges on Try Hack Me or Hack the Box, um, those are both really good places to start and to sort of learn the more pen testing side or OSINT side of things, um, which is sort of what everyone thinks cybersecurity is like. But to be honest, there's more jobs in defensive security than there are in offensive security. Yeah, I hope that sort of answered your question. The next question I have is from Paul Trojan 69 who has said, can you please describe the typical day-to-day -day tasks a cybersecurity analyst does? Um, okay, so cybersecurity analysts are also known as, I guess, threat intelligence or threat response. And essentially what they're doing is solving tickets that come through for risk events. So, for example, firewalls and logs. For example, firewalls spit out a bunch of logs which then need to be analyzed by a security analyst. Um, what they're going to be doing is going through those logs and finding the high risk items and inspecting those particular items. Um, in SOC teams or as cybersecurity analysts go, there is also like malware analysis, which is sandboxing malware and sort of inspecting it and seeing how it runs and what it's going to do. Um, there's a lot of other stuff built into firewalls, which is sort of, I guess, being taken over by AI. Um, but those are sort of like the basic tasks of a security analyst. Depending on if you're in a SOC team or not, or just sort of working for an organization that's not that big, um, security analysts also tend to do what network engineers do, which is to make sure that network devices are as secure as possible. So an example, is uh, like port security through Radius um, or 802.1x. Um, a lot of places want this enabled and they want the ports locked down and maybe there's a task to change some of those ports or um, you know rename them or, or change the VLAN that they're on. So there is quite a lot of networking involved sometimes in security analyst roles, but yeah, I guess that's sort of like the daily task is going through the tickets and solving them and escalating anything that you can't solve to either a SOC team lead or um, someone else. Next question is from Carti1597. He has said, I am Stamra. That's why I'm bad in verbal communication. Cybersecurity is good for me, question marks. In cybersecurity, which track is suitable for me? like forensic or pen testing, which track is future-proof from automation? 
Uh, interesting questions. I'll start with the last one. Uh, nothing in the world is sort of future-proofed from automation. What's going to happen is when something is automated, you'd be shifted into a different role within that role. Don't stress out about AI taking over everyone's jobs and, and doing that. If it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen. What is likely to happen is that it will change what your job encompasses and then you would just do something else that the AI can't do. Going back to being a stammerer and um, being bad in verbal communication, I'm going to take a wild guess that English isn't your first language, um, which is fine. Um, if you're planning to work in the country that you're from, whichever that is, uh, none of those things that you've listed here are actually problems. So. Is cybersecurity good for you? Sure, if you can do the job. In cybersecurity, which track is suitable for me, like forensics or pen testing? Um, pen testing is sort of further along the line. I would start off with uh, what this Paul Trojan 69 dude has said, which is to be a security analyst. That's usually like the entry level um, of cybersecurity in many places anyway. Um, and you don't really have to talk that much anyway be honest like you're going to have to talk with your team a little bit and you might have to talk with some customers if you're working for an MSP it might be best for you to stay away from those sort of MSP roles and for anyone who doesn't know an MSP is a managed service provider and they sort of look after a large range of customers and yeah you're not going to want to have to talk to someone on a phone all the time if um, perhaps your stammering is extremely bad I don't know but yeah, I guess um, if you were to work for like a government organization or a large SOC team where you don't have to talk to customers, you're only dealing with internal staff, um, that's going to be fine. You might have to field a few calls and people will understand. Uh, you know, stammering is it's fairly common, so I wouldn't worry about it too much, to be honest. Just study for whichever sort of route you want to take and go for it. Um, the world's your oyster, man. So yeah, good luck to you. All right, last question. We'll go back up to this David fellow who has said, Hey man, how are you? I'm great, David. How are you? Just want to start off saying your channel is awesome. Thank you. And gives good guidance. I appreciate it. I have a question that you have already answered before in another video from long ago on how to become a cybersecurity engineer. You discuss going to university and getting a computer science degree and then landing a job while getting your certifications as you go along and then looking for new jobs. I'm going to be attending university to study computer science. Cool, man. I'm getting my bachelor's in it. But want to pursue the cybersecurity field because of interest and especially demand here in my city slash country. Awesome. The university that I will be attending offers optional concentration areas in information assurance and computer networks and awards certificates for them. That's pretty cool. My question is, is it possible slash worth it to get the certifications required for the cybersecurity that you discussed in your video, such as CCNA, Security Plus certification, and your OSCP alongside your computer science degree? I'll answer this question first before I continue on. Yes, it is possible, but it's going to be extremely hard. The OSCP is a very serious exam to take. Uh, it's a 24 hour examination and it, it's mental. Um, I probably wouldn't want to do that while I was at uni, to be completely honest. The CCNA, uh, you could probably study for that um, in like the off period. So yeah, I, I guess, but it's up to you, man. You can do it afterwards or in between. Um, it depends on your own workload at university. Next bit of this question is, and then possibly landing an entry level job in the cybersecurity field when you graduate. Yeah, that would be good. if. Um, Sometimes after you finish your degree, you can get an entry level job um, either in a, a help desk or as a security analyst. Um, yeah, there's enough work out there in security that you'll more than likely get a job after university. However, I would recommend taking the computer networks award certificate. Um, information assurance sounds pretty cool too, but if I had to pick from one, I would say computer networks uh, as the go-to one there. Okay, last bit of this is, and also, is it worth getting the Computer Networks and Information Assurance Certificate? Yes, I just answered that accidentally. Um, I know experience is what wins in the end in terms of getting a job, 
So that is why I wanted to ask you these questions since I'm a noob and a confused one at the moment and would appreciate any advice you could provide. Um, yeah, experience does tend to win over at the end as well as certifications and uh, motivation. So if, if you're quite enthusiastic, you're more than likely to get a job over someone who's like very robotic with how they talk. In terms of getting experience, I guess my best advice to you here is to, instead of doing a CCNA while you're at uh, university, try to get a part-time job at uh, like a computer shop or a uh, managed service provider on a help desk, just working shift work. So maybe you want to work uh, night times like two or three days a week. If they have a position available for those sort of things, that is absolutely perfect. Get that experience in there and show it off as much as you can when you go for an interview. Um, do the CCNA and the OSCP later, I reckon. it's They're quite intense. Um, the CCA is not quite as bad as the OSCP, but it's still you know, it's quite a lot while you're also doing university. Um, but definitely the computer network certificate sounds pretty cool. And the um, information assurance sounds okay as well. But it, I guess you sort of, it depends on if you can actually do both of those while studying. Anyway, that's all we have time for today, guys. Thanks for watching. As always, don't forget to hit subscribe. Hit like if you enjoyed this video and comment below if you have any questions. Um, if there are other questions that I haven't answered or you put it in a video and I didn't answer you in that video, throw it on the website here. It's cybersecguidance.com forward slash forum. This is where I'm reading the questions from and this is where I'm going to answer them. So anyway, I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.